Hi, it's Ali. Yesterday I went to the new photography exhibition at the Barbican which is called Strange and Familiar and it's curated by Martin Parr. The exhibition showcased photos of the UK since 1930s up until the present day and the twist is all of the pictures were taken by photographers from outside of the UK so it's kind of showing how do others see us. It's interesting to see through an outsider's lens how the culture of Britishness has changed and stayed the same over the years, and the pictures also showed how the medium of photography has developed. Pardon the pun. The images on the first floor range from the 1930s to 1970s. The Britain of this period was depicted through a series of photos showing both the public and private lives of the nation. My favourite pictures on this floor were the portraits of the people on the ground who are going about their daily business in their local community, so the people like the newspaper vendors or the market traders in Soho. These pictures really immortalise such lively, vibrant characters who are so proud to have their photo taken. These candid moments really captured the joy of the everyday, which we living in the UK might pass by or take for granted. We all know that feeling when we go on holiday and everything seems fun and new and exciting, and that's actually how I felt about my own home country, looking at it through this outside lens. I should mention at this point, by the way, that the photographers were from all around the world, so from the Netherlands, Japan, Germany, America and France, to name just a few. The overall mood that I took away from the upstairs of the exhibition was one of pride and nostalgia for a sense of British community that for some has now vanished. Moving now to the downstairs of the exhibition, which goes up to the present day, I was really excited to see this new perspective on the Britain that I myself grew up in. The first photographer featured downstairs was my favourite of the whole exhibition. Shinro Otaki's series UK 77 was a collection of Polaroids that he'd taken when he was 22 years old in the UK and he described this as his first experience of a foreign country. Looking through Otaki's hundreds of photos was like flipping through a friend's holiday snaps, the way that he'd managed to capture the whole landscape via inanimate objects, people and places. Moving on into the next room, there was an abrupt shift in tone as the size of the prints grew and their colours intensified. It was from this point onward that I felt the curatorial emphasis on the socio-political became too didactic. The stretch of photos depicting dead-eyed girls out clubbing, ugly abandoned buildings and people glued to their smartphones in a Birmingham shopping centre perhaps left other more vibrant communities and moments out of the picture. It seemed a shame. It struck me at this stage in the exhibition that Parr seemed to be presenting an unbalanced view of British culture and identity today. Maybe this is a consequence of international photographers looking for a notion of the UK that doesn't necessarily exist anymore. Or maybe Parr is more interested in showing what we've lost than what we've gained. Really, what I most took away from Strange and Familiar was its subtext of the changing nature of photography through the ages. Strange and Familiar is on at the Barbican until June 19th, so make sure you get your tickets on the Barbican website now. If you've already been to the exhibition, I'd love to see what you thought about it in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to the Barbican YouTube channel for more from the young reviewers.